I wanted to take a moment to talk through the Salesforce classic layout. What I'm looking at is, remember we have different versions of Salesforce and what I want to do is talk through some of the common features of all of them. Essentially, whatever format you're using in Salesforce or whatever version you're using in Salesforce has the same components but they're located in different ways and they look different. Right now, we're on the home page of the Salesforce Classic. And what I see is Pathaleti, right? I have my home page on the left hand side. I have my create new feature, which allows me to create events, tasks, accounts, contacts, reports, leads, and opportunities. I can also edit this, which I'll show you in a moment. My recent items, as well as my recycle bin. That helps me retrieve items that I may have deleted along the way. I then have what we call custom and standard objects at the top. And if you can imagine, for those who may be new to Salesforce, an object is almost like a bucket. And that bucket holds what we call fields, right? And fields are basically pieces of information. So in some cases, we have ways in which one bucket could fit or connect to another bucket. For example, contacts and accounts. Every contact must have an account. And in some cases, the bucket can stand alone, such as a lead or opportunity. In this case, I'm going to just talk you through some of the pieces here. So we have accounts. If I clicked on accounts, it would take me to a page that looked like this. And as you go through, you'll notice that they pretty much all appear more or less the same. I'm not going to go into each of these in detail uh, in this lecture, but what I'm going to do is show you a few other pieces that are important. The first thing is if you click on the name of the user, you're able to look at your profile, your settings, develop a console. You can also switch to Lightning Experience or log out. If I click on Settings, this is where I can use things to administer Salesforce, such as users. I can add users. I can edit the company profile, for example. I can also build. So in this case, I could build custom apps or I could edit custom objects and I can deploy and monitor systems. What this helps me do is just keep track of the information I have and essentially customize Salesforce to meet my organization's needs. Now you'll notice that at the top we have some of these objects. If I click the plus button right here, you can see the many, many options that we have. And let's say I wanted to actually um, add one of these up here. And let's say I wanted to add the idea section, which is quite an important one. What we could do is actually click on customize, as I've just done. Scroll down to ideas, drag it over. If I wanted to move it up, I could. And click save. As you'll notice, that ideas is right up here. And if I clicked on it, I could then post an idea, vote for an idea, or add comments. Okay, now that we have that, the next key thing is to understand that every Salesforce version uh, is different, right? So you have Salesforce Lightning and Salesforce Classic. What I've tried to do in this lecture is give you an idea of some of the basic features of Salesforce Classic. One of the caveats and what I meant by it may look different is that your organization um, is often able to customize Salesforce to, for example, brand it or even move things such as font sizes, colors, and things like that. So what you're looking at is the nuts and bolts of the Salesforce Classic. In the next lecture, I'll actually talk about the Salesforce Lightning experience and some of the common features there.